a week ago, Jared Goff signed a four-year, $212 million contract, making him the second highest paid quarterback by average annual value at $53 million per year. And so I thought it would be a good time to ask the question, have quarterback contracts gotten out of control? But before we get into the video, I want to take a second to ask you to please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. It really helps us out. If you're a fan of the NFL, you'll love this channel as we release multiple NFL-related videos every Tuesday and Friday all year long. Now, let's get back to the video. So Jared Goff signed this $53 million per year contract, and the consensus among most NFL fans is this is a good and reasonable deal. Jared Goff has turned the Detroit Lions into one of the best teams in the NFL since coming over from the LA Rams as, at the time, what was thought to be just a stopgap quarterback. And with the Lions going to the NFC Championship last game, being one of the favorites coming into 2024, giving this guy the money that a lot of quarterbacks are getting seemed to make a lot of sense in most people's minds. But how does this contract line up compared to, say, historical contracts for quarterbacks? And when we look at this, we see that typically quarterbacks are at about 17% or lower in terms of cap hits, at least from 2013 to 2020. There's the one outlier year of Jimmy Garoppolo when the 49ers signed him initially. They front-loaded his contract because they knew that they really didn't have many other contracts that year, so might as well pay him up front. Outside of that, though, no quarterback cleared 17% of the cap in any given year from 2013 to 2020. And then let's look at Jared Goff. So Jared Goff at $53 million per year when the cap hit right now is $255.4 million would be about 20.7% of the cap if we were to take his average annual value. And he's not even the highest paid quarterback in the league. There's Joe Burrow, who's at $55 million per year. You also have Justin Herbert at $52.5 million per year. Jalen Hurts at $51 million per year, as well as Lamar Jackson at $52 million per year. So a lot of quarterbacks are well exceeding this 17% threshold. That seems to be the threshold for competitive teams, at least in the past. But remember, this is cap hit percent. When I'm talking 53 million, that's talking the average value of the contract, i.e. the average cap hit of the contract, but not necessarily the cap hit up front. Because remember, cap hit can be spread and pushed into later years of a contract. So let's look at the top 10 cap hits in 2024 for quarterbacks and see how they compare on this threshold. So when we look at this, what do we notice? Well, we notice that clearing 15%, which seems to be the kind of high-end salary maximum, you have six quarterbacks that clear 15% of the salary cap. Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, kind of. He's been cut, but his cap hit is that much. Matt Stafford, Kyler Murray, and Daniel Jones. The rest of the quarterbacks on this list, i.e. Mahomes, Jackson, Allen, and Burrow, they don't clear 15%, though they do come close. And it should be noted, all of them are well below their average annual value on their contract. Burrow's AAV is $55 million. He's being paid less than 30 Josh Allen's $43 million. He's being paid just over 30 Lamar Jackson, $52 million. He's being paid just over $32 million. And Patrick Mahomes, $45 million. He's being paid just over $37 million. So all these guys are well below their average annual value. And that's because they're all early on in their contracts. Josh Allen is kind of in the middle of his contract, but Patrick Mahomes with a super long contract is in the first part of his contract. Lamar and Joe Burrow just recently signed their contracts this past offseason, so it makes sense that they're in the lower part of their contracts. However, some of these other quarterbacks are at significantly higher cap hits. You look at the difference between Daniel Jones at six and Patrick Mahomes at seven. It is over $10 million difference in terms of cap hit between them. And so why do we have so many quarterbacks that are above 15% of the cap hit for 2023? Remember, if we go back, you never had a single year with more than three quarterbacks exceeding 15%. And this year, you have six quarterbacks exceeding 15% of the salary cap. And so let's maybe try to analyze why that is. So we'll start with Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, he really exceeds this cap hit because the Cleveland Browns were kind of hamstrung when it came to the situation with Watson. The Cleveland Browns wanted Watson. Watson didn't want to go to the Cleveland Browns. 
And so hearing about this, Baker Mayfield wanted out of Cleveland. And so the only way Cleveland could stay competitive was to offer Deshaun Watson a contract he could not refuse. And so that involved $230 million over five years, fully guaranteed. And the first year of that contract basically paid him nothing in terms of cash or cap it in order to protect him from the impending suspension that was going to be coming from the NFL thanks to all his nefarious massage related activities. And so his cap hit is so high because having this high a cap hit is the only way that the Cleveland Browns can minimize the void cap that's going to be incurred after this contract for Deshaun Watson finishes. If you watch my videos recently about contracts, you'll know that you have the ability to push contract term and cap into years outside of the contract. However, when you do this, if a player leaves the franchise, that entire amount becomes dead cap in the first year they're off your team, which is not ideal for a lot of teams out there. And so that's why Deshaun Watson has this excessive cap hit. Now, the Browns could decide to push more cap into the future in order to reduce his cap hit. But again, you don't wanna do that too much because it really screws you over into the future and given Deshaun Watson hasn't been that effective as a quarterback it might not be the best move for the Browns and so while they could do it I wouldn't be surprised to see them actually take this cap hit in 2024. Next up is Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has about a $55 million cap hit and so a lot of Cowboys fans might be asking well Jerry Jones said he was going all in why aren't we trying to reduce this cap hit push it into the future and have a better team in 2024 and the reason is because Dak Prescott's not signed through 2024, which means any money you push out of this year for Prescott becomes dead cap in 2025 if he doesn't resign. And Dak Prescott's dead cap in 2025 is already $40 million. So yeah, you could push a portion of this cap into the future, but that's just going to increase your dead cap in 2025 when Dak Prescott might not even be on the team. And so while a lot of people might blame Jerry Jones for the Cowboys not going all in, it's actually kind of Dak Prescott's fault because if Dak Prescott was willing to re-sign a contract, then I can tell you right now, I bet you they would move more of this contract into the future and have signed a lot more guys in free agency. The only reason they're not is because Jerry Jones needs to balance the fact that Dak Prescott might not re-sign after this season, and he knows that. And if you want a perfect example of this, look no further than Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins' cap hit with the Atlanta Falcons is only $25 million for 2024, even though his average annual value over the course of his four-year contract with the Falcons is $45 million. Then, look at his contract with the Vikings. The Vikings have a cap hit incurred for Cousins of $28.5 million in 2024. The Vikings have a larger cap hit for the past play of Cousins than the Falcons will for the current play of Cousins in 2024 which is exactly what could happen to Dak Prescott if Dak Prescott were to leave the Dallas Cowboys in the offseason. And this is a similar situation to what happened with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has a $53 million cap hit to the Denver Broncos, even though he's only incurring less than $2 million cap hit for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024. And this is just a situation where the Denver Broncos definitely could have gotten to a point of time where he wouldn't have had as big a cap hit, he wouldn't have had as much of dead cap, but the problem was the Broncos knew that Russell Wilson wasn't going to be the quarterback to lead them to greatness. And he had guaranteed money that was going to be coming due in the future if he had stayed with the team. And so what the Denver Broncos decided to do was just bite the bullet now, cut him now, that way they didn't bite a not great bullet of Russell Wilson for a number of years before cutting him for a pretty unreasonable amount still later, but instead, they cut him now, take a bigger pill to swallow now, but they get to move on from Russell Wilson much sooner than had they have waited this out for another, say, four or five years, which was the alternative. An example of this alternative would have been what the Tennessee Titans did with Ryan Tannehill. In 2023 and 2022, Ryan Tannehill was one of the top two highest cap hit quarterbacks in the NFL, even though he was nowhere close to as effective as he was in early years in Tennessee. And that was because the Tennessee Titans knew that they weren't going to be re-signing Ryan Tannehill at the end of this contract. He was a little bit of an older QB. He was slowing down. And so the Tennessee Titans decided to take his entire cap hit in those years, only having $9.2 million in dead cap in 2024. And then the Titans would be able to move on pretty quickly from Tannehill and not have a massive cap hit 
being incurred for a player not playing for their team. This is the opposite of what happened with the Broncos and Russell Wilson, but it's the alternative that the Broncos could have gone down if they didn't want to take this big pill to swallow now. Next up, we have Matt Stafford, who has three years left on his contract at approximately $50 million per year in all the cap hits, which is why he has such a high cap hit in 2024. But the nice thing for the Rams is at the end of this contract, they won't owe any dead cap to Matt Stafford if they decide to have him play through the end of the contract. They could cut him after two years and have a significantly lower dead cap than they would in terms of his contract, but we'll have to see how Matt Stafford performs as his career goes on in terms of what they'll do at that point in time two years from now. Either way, the Matt Stafford contract isn't a bad contract. They signed an older QB to a long-term contract who had just won a Super Bowl, and he's still been very effective in the NFL. The problem is that the Rams don't want to re-sign him at the end of this contract, or at least not for a massive contract when this term ends, because he's going to be 39 years old by that point in time. There are very few quarterbacks who are effective at 39 years or older in the NFL. Outside of really Tom Brady, we have never seen an effective quarterback going into their 40s, at least thus far. Aaron Rodgers has the potential to do it, but he still hasn't done it. We really haven't seen it from him yet because he tore his Achilles last year, and he's not even turning 40 until this NFL season. And so, Matt Stafford, it kind of makes sense why the LA Rams are trying to eat that contract now. They have a really good young core and they don't want to get screwed over by a Matt Stafford dead cap long into the future because they made their team a little bit better in these years, especially after they just lost a guy like Aaron Donald. And the team is definitely in this kind of weird in-between. They could compete, but they're not really competing for a Super Bowl right now. And so why not take the cap it? It's what a lot of good teams should do if you're going to manage your portfolio. Our second to last guy is Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray, along with our last guy, Daniel Jones, are very similar. Kyler Murray is just a guy who got overpaid. That's the end of the day. He got overpaid. His contract isn't as bad as Daniel Jones, who is just awful. But he's getting paid over $45 million per year to be a mid or mediocre quarterback. And so what the Arizona Cardinals are doing is basically saying, we're not trying to compete right now, so let's take as much of the cap it as possible right now so we're not getting screwed in the future when we might actually be in a ready-to-compete window after we get a bunch of young guys in, such as what they had this year with guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. joining the fold. This is why the Cardinals got rid of DeAndre Hopkins last year and Hollywood Brown this year. It's because they know they're not trying to compete, so get rid of the high contracts you can, eat the cap hit on the high contracts you can't get rid of, and put yourself in a good position to compete when you're ready. The same story is true of the New York Giants. The New York Giants could probably get out of this Daniel Jones contract after this year, and so they're eating as much contract as possible now, so they have as little dead cap as possible come 2025. They can cut Daniel Jones, they can move on with theoretically a new young quarterback that they might be able to draft in the 2025 NFL draft, and be a better team for it. And so going back to this list, you can kind of see why some of these quarterbacks have such high cap hits. And yes, some of these guys could be restructured to reduce their cap hits, especially guys like Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott with the Browns and Cowboys respectively, because those teams are trying to compete now. But for the Browns and Watson, it would be a really tough decision to make to reduce this cap hit because you're just pushing that cap hit into the future. Deshaun Watson has a fully guaranteed contract and hasn't been a very good quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. If anything, the Browns should be trying to just void this contract, somehow get out of it. But unless they can, it might be the best decision to just eat this cap hit now and not get screwed over later by this trade that just isn't working out for you. Then if you look at the Cowboys, yeah, they could restructure the contract, but that just makes the cap hit that comes in 2025 even higher than the already $40 million that they're going to incur if Dak Prescott were to leave the team. Now, if Dak Prescott signs a contract, don't be surprised to see him restructure the 2024 contract into the future in order to have it be realized over the next multiple years. But if that doesn't happen, I do expect them to stay with this current contract for Dak Prescott into 2024, especially given the draft and free agency are already basically done. And beyond that, you don't want to have a massive dead cap hit. The second highest dead cap hit if a quarterback were to leave their team right now is Dak Prescott. And you do not want to be the highest team. 
The highest team is the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. This is one of the most insane contracts in history. I talked about this in a previous video, but if Jalen Hurts were to leave the Philadelphia Eagles at the end of his contract, his dead cap to the Eagles would be $97 million. Basically, the Eagles have no choice but to re-sign Jalen Hurts at the end of this contract or have the largest cap hit by a country mile in NFL history for a guy who's not even playing for their team. And the Eagles couldn't have it realized over two years like what the Russell Wilson dead cap is because it wouldn't be a cut. It would be a just signing elsewhere in free agency, which can't be realized over multiple years. So the Eagles are kind of screwed. This is their contract methodology, though. This is how they're signing all their contracts. Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, Hurts here. Everyone the Eagles are signing is under this methodology of push as much cap into the future, make your team as good as possible now, and just hope to God the NFL cap keeps going up at a remarkable clip. So thus far, I've talked a lot about quarterback contracts, quarterback dead caps, and the biggest cap hits for quarterbacks, but I haven't actually answered the question I started this video to answer, which is, are quarterback contracts out of control? And my answer is, kind of. I don't think that certain quarterback contracts are out of control, but I think where it is out of control is the mid-level quarterbacks and the amount of money they're getting. Let's look at a list of the highest paid quarterbacks based on average annual value in the NFL as of the 2024 season. So some of these contracts I don't think are that bad. The Joe Burrow contract, the Justin Herbert contract, the Lamar Jackson contract. Yeah, these guys are getting insane amounts of money, but they're also really good and fairly young quarterbacks, meaning you have the ability for them to play past this contract and you have the ability to move this money into future years when that money won't be as burdensome because the cap will theoretically go up by a little bit. However, the contracts that I think are the most problematic are the mid-level. Let's look all the way down at Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is on a $12.5 million a year contract with the Raiders at 28 years old. Above him is Jordan Love. He signed a two-year $13.5 million contract and that was before he had a snap in the NFL, really outside of the odd snap behind Aaron Rodgers. And this contract basically only existed for the Packers to get a two-year glimpse at Jordan Love, given he was entering his option year, and it was going to be problematic to not have him for two years if he wanted to give him one year to grow into the position and grow into the role as Packers starting quarterback. So this is a little bit of an albatross of a contract just because it was signed for a guy who had never really been a starting quarterback in the NFL. Next up, you have Geno Smith, who goes all the way from $13.5 million as the next highest contract to $25 million. $25 million for Geno Smith. This was after one year of solid production with the Seattle Seahawks, following about a decade of mediocre to poor production in the NFL and being nothing more than a lifelong backup in the league. Showing that one good season in the NFL is all it takes to get paid in this league. Next up, you have Baker Mayfield, who signed a very similar contract in a very similar situation to Geno Smith just a couple years in the future. So he got three years, $100 million, $33 million a year. Think about that. All the way from Gardner Minshew at 12.5 to Derek Carr at 37.5. You have three players, one of whom hadn't been a starting quarterback in the NFL and two of whom basically only had one year of decent history in the NFL to go off of. The problem with NFL contracts is we don't have a middle ground. We don't have a mid-level quarterback contract. It's either these backup quarterback contracts like these Gardner Minshews, these Sam Darnolds, these rookie contracts like your Caleb Williams, your Bryce Youngs, your Jaden Daniels, your Trevor Lawrence, etc., or you have your pay them anything they want contracts, which is basically every reasonable starter in the NFL. Perfect examples of why this doesn't make sense are Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr, Daniel Jones. All these guys are getting paid exuberant amounts of money, even though they're not really quarterbacks that many people would consider to be good enough to win a championship. I don't think these quarterbacks are good enough to win championships in the NFL, even for the right teams. These are quarterbacks that are just there ultimately to be stopgap quarterbacks and potentially future backup quarterbacks. And so if you have quarterbacks who aren't good enough to win a Super Bowl, why are you paying them so much money? 
I don't have a problem with paying these guys some amount of money because at the end of the day, if you have the opportunity to make the playoffs, that's additional revenue. If you have the opportunity to show that your other players are good because you have a good enough quarterback to showcase the talent of your wide receivers, your offensive line, your running back, your tight ends, etc., then it might be worth it. If you have the ability to keep your job as a GM, it might be worth it. I can understand that. But what I don't understand is paying some of these quarterbacks excess amounts of money. I love Jared Goff. I'm a Detroit Lions fan. Jared Goff does not belong in the same conversation as Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, and Lamar Jackson. He just doesn't. But why does he get paid like them? He gets paid like them because Kirk Cousins is getting $45 million a year. And is Jared Goff worth about 20% more than Kirk Cousins right now? Yeah, he is. I would agree with that. And why is Kirk Cousins getting that much? Because Daniel Jones is getting paid $40 million a year. Is Kirk Cousins worth $5 million more than Daniel Jones? Heck yeah, he is. The problem is you have some bad contracts that teams sign and then agents are able to basically put GMs and teams over a barrel and compare the player they're trying to get signed to a recent bad contract. Whenever any quarterback now is trying to get signed, all you got to do is compare to Deshaun Watson or Kyler Murray. Are they worth more than them? Yeah? Sign them. I think what's going to happen is we are going to see the middle end of quarterbacks start to even out over the coming years. I think we're starting to see the lack of success that's being had with these mid-tier quarterbacks getting basically paid the same amount as a Josh Allen or a Patrick Mahomes who only signed a couple years before them. I think we're going to see a lot more quarterbacks filling in this mid-tier that seems to really only be filled by Geno Smith right now as the years come along and as teams try to get out of these really bad contracts like Daniel Jones, like Deshaun Watson, like Kyler Murray. And you'll then see guys like Jared Goff start to fall down into probably the mid-low $40 million a year region, which is probably where Jared Goff belongs when you look at the players who are on the high end of this range. What's happened is really for the past decade, it's been a constant battle of the next QB wanting to be paid the most amount of money. I remember back in 2017 when Matt Stafford signed a $27 million per year contract with the Lions, and everyone said that was a massive overpay for a guy who had never won a playoff game. A couple years later, that was considered one of the best contracts in football because guys kept overtaking what the previous highest contract was. I think we're getting towards the end of that constant overtake and overpay given what we've seen in recent years with quarterback contracts and given the terrible contracts that are on the books right now. And so give it a few years, I think we're gonna start to even out, but if your team is paying a quarterback in the past couple of years, chances are it's an overpay. Either way, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed that video and want to see more content like this. And leave some comments if you want to discuss whether you think quarterback contracts are out of control or reasonable. Either way, I'll see you all next time. Peace!